So I want to talk about my experience so far with Cloud3 Opus for coding. And in my opinion, it's better than GPT-4. And it may not always produce things um, that are above GPT-4. Um, it usually produces things that can be equivalent, but it's much better at just giving you everything that you want. So let's jump into it. And I just want to run through um, some possible examples with it and uh, go from there. So with Cloud3, I recently did a couple of um, tests with it. I, I uh, One of the big ones was I made a YouTube downloader app in Kotlin. Uh, I have no clue how to do Android development, but it was able to help me just make one. Um, and I went through the process with it on Cloud AI. And then I tried going through it with GPT-4, but it, um, it wasn't as, uh, let's say it wasn't as helpful with trying to do it. It would just cut short on a lot of the code and would say, fill in your, your code here. Now, you know, that's cool if we're uh, trying to learn things, but I, I just wanted a, a quick working app. So Cloud3 is much better at um, helping us uh, just let the AI do the work instead of having to actually learn the stuff. So <laughs> regardless, let's take a look at the um, Cloud3 real quick. Um, I'm going to make a quick app that's just um, going to, let's say, convert some audio files. And uh, let's say I want to create a graphical user interface for it. So I'm going to prompt it in Claude AI, and then I'm going to prompt it into ChatGPT and see what the difference is. So let's go ahead and craft a prompt real quick. All right. So here is a quick little prompt right here. Um, it's going to be for downloading a YouTube video. I need a Python app with a graphical user interface for downloading a YouTube video, uh, being able to select what format I'd like to download and then being able to download. It should have a text box that allows for the link, a button to click to get the formats and then a button to download. If the user tries to enter um, or download without a format, an error should occur to tell the user to enter and pick a format first. So I'm going to use this prompt and send it. And at the same time, I'm going to send it in GPT-4. Now, I'm not going to tell it explicitly to give me the entire code um, because, you know, that might be cheating for GPT-4. In this case, this is how GPT-4 used to be. It would just throw the code at you. Um, in this case, now GPT-4, it's going to break it down into a bunch of steps and it may or may not give me the full code. So, okay. So just from the imports here, we got TK Inter, PyTube. I've actually never heard of PyTube. Um, it is using PyTube here. So it looks like we'll get comparable outputs and we'll see about, uh, whether or not it works. So let me go ahead and just create a new folder. Um, I'll just call this one YouTube test. And then I'll create a virtual environment. So let me go ahead and do that. So we've got this environment opened and uh, we'll go ahead and open this up with VS code. So we'll have it pop up here and we'll hop back into the browser to see um, what we got. All right. So this is all done here. Let's make a new one. We'll call this Claude3.py and then paste this into here. And we'll do gpt4.py and then we'll paste in uh, gpt 4s So here we go. <clears throat> All right. So we now need to just get PyTube into here. So venv scripts activate py pip install PyTube. So I'm, I'm not sure what PyTube is, but uh, we'll see if it works. All right, so let's run the code in Claude Threes first and see what um, see what we get. See if it runs without any errors. Um, oh, here, let me select it in the bottom right corner. You can't see what I clicked, but let me just select this for the um, VS Code environment, and then we'll rerun that code. So here we go. Here we got a little nice uh, TK Inter uh, window, and let me hop into my channel here and. Uh, download a video real quick. All right, so we'll go ahead and grab the link from my latest video, which is um, training tortoise in another language and jump back into here, paste it. Um, well, actually first here, let me let me try this download. OK, so it's got in gives me an error and all right, still so allows me to move it. Cool. So get formats. All right, it'll give me the formats and I can hopefully download it. So let's do download here and see if um, we get it. All right, so video downloaded successfully. 
All right, here we go. We have the video from Cloud3. Cool. So let me delete that. And let's now run GPT-4s. So right, Python debugger. Alrighty, so it looks identical, actually. So first try. Um, well, actually, hold on a second. Let me rerun that. And uh, let's see, download, enter, pick a format. Alrighty, fetch formats. Okay, so what is going on here? So now we've we got a different... Um, let me just make sure that I have the correct. Let me just recopy that link, paste it, fetch formats. And yeah, that's what we got. All right, let's click download and see what happens. And all right, so on first try, we get an error with GPT-4. Now, if we go back into Claude 3 Opus, uh, run that code, plop that in here, we'll get the formats. And it looks, yeah, it's giving it to us in a, a list of different formats we can download. And then I can run through download and boom, it's finished downloading. So just on this little example, Cloud3 right off the bat works. And so that's one thing that I've been noticing is that the code from Cloud3 um, generally works more often than not on the first try than GPT-4. So in this case, I would have to go through GPT-4 and say, um, let's see if it can redeem itself by giving it this error. So what I'm going to do is just screenshot this real quick and send it over into GPT-4. I am getting a few errors with the code. Okay. And so let's see if we take a look at the fetch formats. So it might be messing up with this filter option here for when it's trying to filter out all of the um, different formats. And let me pause real quick and see if the code will um, run after this is done. All right. So it's giving us some code for the download video function for GPT-4. And we'll go ahead and replace the current one that's in here. And I think, yeah, that should be correct. That should be good. So let's go ahead and paste this link, fetch formats, and then go ahead and download. Alrighty, so now we're getting list index out of range um, for this, and it's still not working. We can eventually get it working with GPT-4, um, as you know, I've been doing that forever since it's been released, but you know the the headache is just much less right now with cloud 3 opus and so it's not just this example um there are some other ones like i said earlier i was trying to make a kotlin app for android i have no android development experience so that was uh completely new and completely cool um but yeah gpt4 wasn't much help in there all right and another thing that i found cloud 3 opus is better at is um using documentation that is that it doesn't know or hasn't been trained on so in this case i'm going to take the uh, whisper x repository and i'm going to see if it can create me a script that allows me to use this to do this all i'm going to simply do is just copy the entire page and um you know all of these extra stuff in here as well and see what type of script it is able to give me so i'm going to do a new chat and say could you give me a script and basic instructions on how to use this github repo so we're going to now just paste all that into here and something different about cloud 3 is it just plops it up here and so we'll go ahead and send that and then I'll do the same thing inside of chat GPT. So let's do that and paste that into there. And while those are finishing up, I've got this um, uh, video right here and I'm just going to rename it test.mp4. So um, we'll wait for those ones to finish up or actually. And uh, surprisingly, once it finished up, ChatGPT is now giving me the output that I want, which is a script that can run it. And it's um, giving me the, the 
quick code here, whereas Claude just gave me the command line output here. This works, but Claude 3 to me seems better generally at being able to get the code correct on the first try. So let's go ahead and correct it. I would like it in a Python script and see what it gives me with that. In the meantime, let's go ahead and uh, run through the virtual environment stuff that I need for Whisper X. Okay, and so looks like it, it gives me the full script here. So this is what I wanted. Um, and it looks like it even gives me diarization, but let's say I don't want diarization 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 can you take that out? So don't want diarization have him take it out. Uh, one thing I was noticing as I was reading GPT-4's response is it tells me to convert it to a audio file, which I don't know why. Um, there isn't any explicit instruction in Whisper X to convert it into an audio file before you process it. So that was just some, um, I'd say, guessing on GPT-4's part that you do need an audio file for this. But um, let's see, looking at the code... Yeah, it looks like it gives us just a simple script that we need for it. So we'll jump through into here and do GPT-4 transcribe.py. Put that into here. And then we'll do um, a clod3 transcribe. We'll put that into here. So top back into this uh, clod3. And it took out diarization here. Perfect. Now, if there's one thing that I'm noticing is that the um, code implementation for Cloud 3s looks closer to uh, what we have in the uh, Python usage here. Whereas um, if we take a look at GPT-4s, it um, doesn't seem to look as close, but yeah, it's still using the, the correct um, object. So yeah, we should be able to uh, get the transcription working with both of these models in here. We just have to finish for this. So, all right. And once Torch is done downloading, I can copy and paste this into here so that we can get Whisper X downloaded as well. All right. So Whisper X is downloading. And one thing that I want to do is actually just change this to a large V3 because I don't want to. I don't want to re-download <laughs> re the the Whisper models because those are pretty big files. I'm going to run through the clods first, and then we'll do the GPT-4s. All right, go ahead, Python debugger, run through cloud 3s and then it should be going down here. So already looks like transcription is starting on the, the cloud one. So, and it finishes up here. Cool. So, um, alrighty, looks like we ran into an issue here. Module whisper X has no attribute save SRT. All right, so it looks like um, Cloud3 hallucinated that. So we'll see if GPT-4s runs without any issue. And, um, oh, it's actually going to run into issue because it's renamed the audio file to test audio AAC. So let me uh, readjust that to MP4 and rerun that. So that's because um, it wanted me to convert it with FFmpeg beforehand. So now it'll just take in that file. Oh, it looks like Torch is just not defined um, for the GPT-4 one. I didn't even notice that. Uh, yeah, there's no Torch in here, and it's using Torch. So both of these models failed on the first try uh, to get it going. So let's redo that for GPT-4 and see if it actually will convert. In the meantime, I'll say there is no um, save SRT and give that to Claude and uh, let's see there is no save SRT in whisper X and then just go through go back to here so all right so here you go looks like we have the transcription and um, GPT-4s doesn't save it it just gives us the transcription out so this is now going for Claude and one thing that I should note about um, Cloud Opus is it just gives you, it usually just gives you, if your script is small enough, it usually just writes the entire thing out for you, which for me is much um, appreciated. So now I should be able to just run through that. And then, well, I think it's still hallucinating here because it's not detecting that there is a write SRT uh, function, 
And yeah, looks like we're still getting some hallucination issues. Well, for that second example, I'm going to stop here for running through that. It looks like we failed on both ends to get it um, working from the first try for just copy and pasting this entire repository in here. So still requires you to requires you to use your brain a little bit for um, getting the code working and being able to debug it with the AIs if you'd like. But yeah, that's going to be just, you know, just my quick uh, my quick experience with um, using Claude 3 Opus for the past week just to assist in some of the script makings for um, making data sets and all those different things. Um, in my experience, Claude 3 has been better. So that is very much welcome as I do like having competition in the market because now these LLMs are all going to hopefully get better. And um, yeah all for it. Well, that's going to be it for today's video. Once again, I'd like to thank all the members of my channel for supporting me and I will see all of y'all later.